Chinese New Year, well known for fireworks, red envelopes, and cool looking dragons. But at the risk of sounding like some David Attenborough of economics, it also happens to be the largest migration of any mammal on the planet. A combination of Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Eve all rolled into one. Yet even so, up until fairly recently, the economic impact of the Spring Festival had been pretty limited outside of East Asia. And to be honest, for most people, it still is. But with the economic rise of China, a story we're all too familiar with on this channel, many countries, businesses, and even economics nerds are paying increasing attention to the holiday. So to help understand the economic impacts, we're going to be taking a look at how Chinese New Year affects the world's second largest economy what this means for the rest of us, and what the future impacts could look like. Also, if you're watching this half an hour after upload, we'll be going live on the Alt Simplified Discord server general chat, so feel free to come say hi and ask any questions, the link to which is in the description below. A good place to start would be how the Lunar New Year impacts China. A key driver is that the holiday isn't just limited to a single day. Think of it more like a season, just like Christmas or Easter, the build-up starts way in advance. However, there is typically much more emphasis on the movement of any economy's most valuable resource, people. You see, rapid industrialization over the last one to two generations has created literally hundreds of millions of cases where people work in large urban areas but have significant family ties to far-flung towns and villages. As with most things, the Chinese actually have a term for this spring movement called, and forgive my pronunciation, Chen Yuan, the 40 day travel period which starts with urban to rural migration and then back again. To give you an idea of the scale of this, during 2019, an approximate 3 billion journeys were made over this period, the vast majority by road, but an estimated half a million flights and 70 million passengers travelled by high speed rail, an enormous logistical undertaking requiring the infrastructure to go along with it. For example, in the lead up to 2018's holiday period, China launched a staggering 10 new railways. In fact, high speed rail has become integral to the holiday, and in general, a symbol of development. With very good reason. The country has over 35,000 kilometers of high speed rail, which is more than the rest of the world combined, producing track at an estimated two thirds of the price of other countries. But why can they produce it so cheaply? Well, the nation has several advantages. Firstly, all the nuts, bolts and blocks used tend to be standardised, which sounds like an easy win, but you'll be surprised just how often designs can vary on similar projects. Not to mention that production is largely met locally. Also, China's centralised state enables huge infrastructure projects to rapidly clear legal obstacles, a controversial financial advantage. As according to the World Bank, Land acquisition and resettlement reflected less than 8% of the cost in China to build high speed rail, compared to more than 17% in California. And this is before we look at the actual builders of these sleek looking trains, which tend to be Chinese state owned enterprises, who get unbelievable levels of government support. Now back to the main topic. The downing of tools across the nation has a noticeable impact on the country's exports. Given that Chinese New Year always falls in the first quarter, many commentators wait until the second quarter to gain a better understanding of what's really going on in the economy. These factory shutdowns also lead to some unintended consequences, especially because they occur simultaneously. By doing so, workers' wage bargaining power dramatically improves, at least for a few weeks. It's not uncommon for factory workers to refuse to go back to work unless their wage demands are met being a great time to change jobs. And speaking of wages, the holiday often coincides with when annual bonuses are paid for those lucky enough to receive one. Something which definitely comes in handy as retail expenditures during the period skyrocket. For example, in 2019, an estimated $150 billion was spent by consumers. To be fair though, this is still some way short of the $1.1 trillion Americans spent on Christmas but still equates to more than the total GDP of Kuwait and on par with Ukraine's. Fun fact. Spending money on irrelevant gifts is only part of the equation though. Red envelopes filled with cash, typically given to younger family members, also play a big role. And with the rise of online payments, this is increasingly done via smartphones. According to WeChat, over 820 million electronic envelopes were sent in 2019. 
so pay attention mum and dad, online payments only please. Now, up until this point, we've spoken a great deal about the economic impacts inside China. Being the second largest economy means what happens in China rarely stays in China. So, how does the holiday period impact the rest of the world? Up until this point, we've discussed celebrations in China, though the Lunar New Year is celebrated in many countries, particularly those in East Asia, where public holidays are fairly common, somewhat skewing their economic data at the same time. In fact, the trading volumes across most major East Asian economies take a dip during the holidays. And as market psychology is such an important factor, this psychological feel-good factor often leads to an increase in indices. Though it is often as short-lived as the holiday season itself. Sorry to burst the bubble. The effects don't stop there though. As already mentioned, China's factories grind to a virtual halt meaning international supply chains have become acutely aware of when the holiday starts and finishes, a pattern which repeats itself every year. Taking a look at plane cargo shows just this, having knock-on effects for supply chains, just-in-time deliveries, and ultimately companies' bottom lines. Keeping on the theme of trade, China's slowing output provides its trading partners an opportunity to close the trade gap, at least for a month or two. According to the US Census Bureau, the US's trade deficit with China tends to drop during this period, something very much driven by falling Chinese exports rather than rising US ones, a trend familiar across the world. Now, whilst Chinese exports of goods slow down, an increasing number of Chinese citizens choose to escape the rush and become international tourists, given that it's one of the few times of the year when whole families are off together, families which have over time become more wealthy with this growing middle class taking to the skies in increasing numbers. During the 2019 celebrations, over 6 million international tourist trips were made, underlining an important trend. The nation's outbound tourism is already the world's largest, accounting for one-fifth of international tourist spending. And they're not cutting corners when it comes to spending either. Many luxury brands rely heavily on the holiday to boost sales often hosting elaborate displays and tailor-made experiences. Not surprising when the Chinese market accounts for a third of global luxury spending. The new year is also a time of good luck. And what better way to spread some of that luck than donating your wealth to the global casino industry? For places like Las Vegas, the period is one of their most profitable times of year. Looking at where most of Nevada's high rollers come from reveals that a staggering 80% fly in from Asia. No wonder they're willing to put up some decorations. And in return, it's common for the industry to record billion dollar takings during the new year. A time of good luck indeed. Though, should we be anticipating more of its economic impacts? What are the future projections for Chinese New Year? It's fair to say that the last two years have been distortive. Beforehand, a range of the holiday's metrics, from consumer expenditure to international travel, were showing a steady rise in growth rates, with an anticipated two-thirds of Chinese households expected to reach middle-income status by 2027, the economic footprint of the holiday season will undoubtedly grow. Tourism is likely to be one of the most obvious ways, particularly when we look at Chinese millennials, who according to a HSBC study, already have the highest rate of home ownership in the world, Something which isn't surprising when you consider that the country as a whole has one of the highest rates of home ownership overall. Yet, as the pool of travellers becomes larger, luxury spending may not be so much in the spotlight, especially as China is making increasing moves to lower domestic taxes levied on luxury goods, aiming to bring at least half of all luxury spending its citizens undertake onshore in the next five years. But as the market continues to grow, whether this has an impact on global sales remains to be seen. So overall, the economics of Chinese New Year are as much about talking about future impacts as they are about the impacts on the here and now. In doing so, there certainly is an element of crystal ball gazing. Fundamentally, let's not forget that the holiday is one based on family reunions and traditions. In an increasingly interconnected world, the implications from the largest human migration on the planet will be ever harder to overlook. For all the talk about China, the Lunar New Year is celebrated in many parts of the world. Nevertheless, it is far from the only celebration. China's Golden Week, for example, is increasingly having an impact on global markets as well. When it comes down to it, 
most holidays revolve around logistics, consumer behaviour and society, with each holiday having different variations on fairly common themes. And that's what made this topic so interesting, considering how one set of traditions can impact a whole range of factors, at least for an economics nerd. And now, it's over to you. Do you think Chinese New Year's economic footprint will continue to grow? Is this an economic opportunity for mass market consumerism? Or are the impacts just being overstated, at least for now? We'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you're watching this shortly after upload, feel free to join the Discord server discussion, the link to which is in the description below. And as always, see you in the next video.